uh, you know, as we were singing, a God is almighty God. I mean, if you believe that a God is almighty God, Amen. hallelujah. I mean, he is Sarva Shaktiman. I mean, God is almighty God and he can do anything which is possible, which is, which is impossible with man. Amen. So God is in control and God is doing his will and God is going to bless us together this morning as we are gathering together and worshiping the Lord through Zoom. And it's a great privilege in our life to, uh, to gather together once again in the presence of God. And I greet you all in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, amen. And uh, I'm thankful to uh, uh, God for sending his servants in our midst this morning to preach the word of God. And I just introduce uh, 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 evangelist John El Shaddai, uncle uh, with us from Bangalore. Uh, I'm, I'm so thankful to God for uh, dear uh, John Angle and Elsie Andy as they are attending in our uh, worship service through Zoom. Uh, they, even though they are in, in, in they are in Bangalore, but at, at present they are in Kerala and they are joining with us uh, from Kerala. And uh, actually, uh, that family is one of one of the I mean one of the best family friends of uh, ours, and uh, we are so thankful to God for that family. And uh, while we were working and while we were ministering in 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 Bangalore especially in the uh, Vivekanagar IPC church, you know, that family was a great blessing for all of us. And uh, uh, this family, uh, dear uncle and family, they are the citizens of US at the same time, uh, at present they are, uh, now they are living in India and uh, doing uh, the ministry of the Lord in Karnataka villages, especially in Mysore. Uh, they are supporting uh, many, many people and they are uh, doing their ministry in the villages in, in, in Karnataka area. So we are so thankful to God for that family and uh, uh, we are so blessed to, I mean, have our dear uh, John Angle and Elsie Andy uh, with us this morning as we are sitting in the presence of God. I believe personally that God is going to speak to us, amen. So the word of God, when it comes to the people, you know, that will make the transformation, that will make the changes in the lives of the people, amen? So this morning, let us expect great things from the Lord. And as we are sitting in the presence of God, I believe that God is going to speak to us through the dear servant of God, dear uh, John Angle, and let us listen to the word of God. Let's all put our hands together and welcome uh, dear uh, John Angle in our midst this morning. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good Praise morning, God. everybody. I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I worship the Lord, who is the King of the King and Lord of the Lord of the Lord, the holy ruler and omnipotent who lives in an approachable light. No man could ever see him, will see all glory and honor. Praise and worship is unto him. He is worthy to be praised and adored. And I thank you all for this uh, golden opportunity that uh, I have been granted by my good friend, Pastor Sam Goody Matthew and family uh, to join you all guys through this Zoom. As uh, you are uh, my former pastor of Vivekananda Church Bangalore for, for some time uh, while we were worshiping. And we were ministering together. And I honor him because he's a great man of God with a family uh, serving the Lord. Uh, he was serving the Lord in, in India in different places. Now, God gave him an opportunity to serve the Lord in, the midst, in your midst and to worship together. Uh, my name is John Varghese, and I have a friend name is. Uh, John El Sadai, and my wife Elsie is with me. And by the grace of God, I'm a minister of the gospel and a writer of Christian books, you know, working in Karnataka, especially. Uh, we, I'm, I'm camped in Mysore, working in the, in the midst of the village of Mysore district. So, because of this you know, COVID situation, uh, it happened that uh, we, ha we have been over here uh, almost uh, one year. And between I was uh, there in, in Mysore for two months. Again, I had to come back to Kerala. Uh, it is uh, even here in Kerala or in Mysore. 
the things are the same because you know you cannot go show your physical evidence anywhere because of this uh, pandemic situation. Even though I could visit some places and go to some villages while I was in my so if God willing, uh, we are trying, but we are thinking to go back uh, end of this week back to Bangalore. And we'll be there for some time. Then maybe end of this month or next, uh, uh, I mean, the first week of next month, uh, we are willing to visit Canada, uh, USA. Uh, in New Jersey, where my children are settled, I'm from, I belong from, from, from New Jersey. I have been there for 26 years, working uh, in an airline, Kuwait Airways. Then, you know, when I had a call and a desire, I resigned my job and I just uh, came over to India to do the Lord's ministry. So by the grace of God, we are doing great. And, uh, you know, the pandemic uh, situation in uh, this place, uh, especially in India, is not that less because we have a population, population explosion. So we had uh, much problem here. But in the midst of all this you know, chaos, God keeps us safe. Uh, people are getting affected, especially the third strength of the COVID-19 has struck India in different places, including Kerala. Maharashtra is the worst place. In Bombay, they start lockdown again. So when we thought you know, of getting, things are getting calm and we started relaxing ourselves and we start traveling uh, you know, without much care. Again, this pandemic has stuck a uh, little more severely with the genetic change uh, to affect and uh, do harm for the human world, but there is uh, someone who takes care of us. So Psalms 91 is a popular psalm and uh, hymn that people are reading and singing nowadays, who, who lives under the shelter of the Almighty and the secret places will be safe. And we are under his the canopy of uh, grace and protection. So I thank God for uh, for all his uh, it's many for blessings and kind of mercies that what he has, he has been doing in our, in our life. So I wish and agree, sending our greetings from Kerala to all our dear sisters and brothers and men, in, men and women in God, in Christ, across uh, seven seas, including the Pacific seas and in California where you people are staying. You know, we are in a different situation today. Here it is uh, 11 o'clock in, in the night. And uh, you people are enjoying the, a bright morning with the, in a past 10.30. This is a, this is a marvelous, uh, a wonderful doing, doing of the creation of our Lord. So our Lord is everywhere, anytime. So we are worshiping the same God if it is evening or morning or night or day. So I thank God for so we are serving, uh, serving a God, God, the same God, who is uh, our creator and who is the creator of the light and the darkness and the day and night. When he created the day and night, he said, it is good. So you are good and we are good. That is uh, um, we, the goodness of our Lord. We are tasting in our life. I would like to thank Pastor Sam Guti Matthew family again for having me this opportunity uh, to soon to see you everyone's face. And uh, I was watching the, the children were worshiping the Lord. And I'm more, more happy to hear from Pastor Sam Guti that, you know, uh, the worshiping services there is uh, multi triple languages, not only Malayalam or English or Tamil and Hindi, different languages people gather as a mixed. So that is uh, the work of our God too. He has called us to serve him and worship him, different clan and colors, 
different uh, places, you know, that is, uh, that is God's love. So we thank you for that and uh, we worship our Lord you know, again for this uh, precious day. So let us take uh, for our short time uh, meditation. The book of Mark chapter 5 25 to 34. The book of Mark chapter 5 verses 25 to 34. I don't know how you people are, you know, being arranged. If anybody can read me and help me, this portion will be helpful for me. Otherwise, I'll read from my end. That is right. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, and she had suffered many things from many physicians, and spent all she had. And it was no better, but rather it became worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him and crowd and touched his garment. But she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Can you move up, please? You can read? Okay. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing himself that the power had gone out of him and came around in the crowd and said, who touched my cross? But his disciples said to him, see, the multiple throng you and you say, you touch me. Can you move again, please? One more. And he looked around and see her who had done this. The woman fearing and trembling, knowing had what happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has now saved you, you will go in peace and be healed of your afflictions. Praise the Lord. Thank you for putting the verses on the board. And we thank you. So this is a story of when you see the minister of our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ in this world. His uh, almost 37 miracles has uh, had been performed by our loving God while he was our loving Lord while he was uh, on this world. 37 plus. Out of this 37 plus miracles, most of them were performed while on the street. So I call. Him, that is a, this is a street ministry. Our Lord Jesus was busy 24 hours. He was uh, not a person who worked for three and a half years in this world doing the ministry had never rest. Bible says that he used to go around the streets and places healing the people, preaching the gospel, sitting at the temple and beseeching them and in the night he goes to the Mount Oli and he will communicate with his father. So our Lord was the Lord as a minister or a pastor or a preacher round the clock 24-7 our Lord and most of the time that he is uh, performed his miracles in the street. Whenever you see that, wherever he goes on the street much Miracles were performed. Healing, many healing took place while he was traveling or walking, going to the streets. You can read the Bible, many things. Not only this one, you know, the people, the man at Bethesda, the, the dumb, the deaf man, and, uh, you know, demon possessed the, this uh, Syrian um, lady, woman's daughter. If you think, go read one by one out of 37 miracles, mostly 29 of them were taken place while he was traveling on the street and while he was, you know, preaching and uh, doing, spreading the, the, the gospels. So this is one of the events which happened. And uh, in chapter, book of Mark, chapter 5 has Three kind of healings are there. 
So, and this is, you know, this is in theologians, they say this healing is a mark and mark means book of mark, mark and sandwich. Because before that, there is something happened. After that, there is something happened. And in between, what happened is this healing took place. First, first one was, you know, the, the Genesis uh, uh, scenario happened. Second one was this one. Third one was Jairus daughter was raised from the dead. So this is a miracle happened. Be, uh, uh, between between two healings and miracles took place. So theologians, the book, biblical theology says it is a Martin sandwich. So this story is a tale of torment of a woman for 12 years. Always we like to read from the Bible and go through, oh, it happened. God did or Jesus performed a miracle out of what he was doing, Lord, thousands. This is one of them. It was not one of them. When you go to study the history, the life history of that woman, that young lady, then we know that what was the problem. A lady was, you know, a lady was bleeding for 12 years. When you say about she was bleeding, and uh, you know it was it was something that uh, in her teenage, what did happen for the affliction or the sickness? It happened to her life, destroyed her life. Every young teenage woman has a dream. Everyone has a dream. She has a dream of having getting having a boy getting married, flying with the person for honeymoon to Hawaii, eh? hanging on his hands and going through the mountain and valleys of, you know, hill valleys of Judea. Who doesn't have? Like our young girls go, who goes, you know, with their husbands to different places, enjoying the time. Go to the beach, go to the, uh, the restaurant, go to the you know, different uh, Recreation places, calling from their daddy, mommy, we are doing fine. We are flying, we are going. We are 5,000 feet above. We are on Alaska. Who doesn't want to do that? Who doesn't want to, which parents doesn't want to listen to this one? But in your life, nothing happened. And then girl caught with the severe sickness. She lost all her dream. Who doesn't have the dream? Everyone has a dream. I remember that. When I was 15 years old, I am in Kerala. There is a railway station for me. Far from here, like 15 kilometers from here. That is called Punelur, one of the oldest railway stations in India. I just went to book a ticket for one of my friends, uh, one of my, my uncles to go to Madras. You know, I am I am a man of 68 years. I'm talking a story that while I was 15 years. You just think about 53 years before. So when I went, there was, I saw a crowd was there near the railway station. So when I went, there is a, a beautiful woman, but paralyzed from down. Down from her thigh, she is paralyzed. Having a baby in her hand out of the backlog. Very beautiful, I still remember. Very beautiful woman out of her bed long. And she became pregnant that she gave birth to this small child. Small child is in their hand. The people in our people like to do this, this kind of uh, fun. They gathered together and start asking, who is the father of this child? What is the history? What has happened? How did you do this? You know, people start. The, 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 the common society police to become, to be the good. But they never know what is her history, what happened to her, how did she become. People were hesitating, give her one time food. But when she had a baby, people start questioning her. After hearing all this, this after 15 minutes, she answered, I remember, I have a dream. Everyone has a dream. I have a dream. Everyone has a life. I have a life. 
everyone wishes to be a mother and i wish to be a mother no matter in what which way i did it it is none of your business i still remember it everyone has a day this 12 year this girl our our young girl which is you now the heroine of this story she had a dream now everything is gone she cannot do anything according to the law of moses you know everything is forbidden for her for second for her she cannot go to the temple she cannot be in the crowd she cannot be in with her parents sitting at the dining table having the food if her mother touches her one time mother will not be able to go to the temple for the sacrifice because anybody touches her becomes an unclean because she is unclean according to the word of god according to the law of moses see but first time is she is sickness second she is forbidden third she is forsaken i think i suppose i make my sketch because she will have a separate room if a jewish culture hebrew culture if anybody has a, in a period like a bleeding issue she cannot go into the house she cannot live in the house maybe she has a separate shelter her food will be reached through the window by her mother or someone else without touching her without touching even that window where she stays we are in the world we don't know what happens around we are in a comfort zone we think everything is fine you know there are millions around us crying lamenting weeping with problems and sorrows and sickness especially in this covid situation we can see that one even your own your own wife or husband you know you cannot reach her to see her this is really life and she was desperately disappointed in her shoes anybody else me on you you know what happened get commit suicide there's no more life there's no more hope because she spent the very thing bible says she spent she saw all doctors all medical technologies they use for a healing bible says it is written no doctor no medical you know uh, technology could heal her that was that was you know the curse many times that we we curse our fate of our future apna takdeer hai hum kya karenge humne khuda ne aisa banaya hua gaya hai hum aisa banaya hua hai hum kya karenge this is what they say but she never thought about that she had a hope she was holding a hope for that one day what happened is that she is uh, she was not silent she was going through googling through you know through her, her her laptop and see is there any remedy that can anybody can heal me then after searching the google she found out there is a doctor who heals all the people anybody who approaches him get healed his name is uh, jesus people call him son of son of david people go call him jesus of nazareth so she did not leave her hope don't think that for your 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 problems will you many people think that your problems will end up along with you no it is not the the last days today there are more mornings and days are coming there are days there are many if you if you the kindle your hope and wait for it there is an answer for your agony there is an answer for your prayer 
there is an answer for your pain. There is a remedy for your sickness. She was waiting for a day. She knows that maybe she knows where to reach Jesus. But she cannot reach. She cannot go to the society. She cannot go into the crowd. Because the book of law of Moses forbid that. According if for some reason she goes, people will stone her and kill her. Everybody has a day, but she had a day. One of the days, I'm just telling that she has a day. Jesus was passing through the street. She saw through her in a shelter window that Jesus with the crowd is passing. She thought of, now this is my day and I use my day. She came out, opened the door. She came out, she mingled in the crowd. She reached Jesus, <coughs> touched the tongue of the edge of his, his, his robe. It was a faith. You know how that it happened, Fisher? Which Bible, which uh, law of Moses forbid her not to be communicated or not to be in the society? If you are an unclean lady or woman or a person, the same scripture taught her if you believe in the Lord and you know and pray, you will be healed because Jewish has two signs. One is the circumcision. That is a, one of the sign of the Hebrew. That is a Hebrew. It's a separated person. Another one is his attire, his robe, his clothes. It's a special cloth. Especially Jewish rabbis have a cloth with, you know, you know that here in America, you can see that the rabbis go through the thongs, with the strings, on their dresses, different places. In olden time, the, this Thrones were blue, blue, white, and yellow. Different one was there. Blue and yellow in Book of Deuteronomy. If you go, you can see that one. And Book of Numbers, Leviticus. They have a special dress. And each thing, each thing represents the word of God. We believe that one. If a Hebrew is away from his place, because these people are business people, they aspire us. They go different places and, uh, you know, when they have a problem or when they have the prayer, they turn to where the temple of Jerusalem and hold on this thongs of the cloth. When they have sickness, when they have problem, hold on these strings and pray. And each, you know, each string represents the word of God. Maybe this one of the thongs which represents the if you believe, if you hear my word and obey my decrees, I will not send you, inflict you any of the plagues that I send on the people of Egypt. I am the Lord that healeth you. I am the Lord that healeth you. This thing says that. Every Hebrew Jewish people, merchants, they hold on this thing and pray when towards, you know, direction towards the temple of Jerusalem and they pray. They get healed. They get the answer for their prayer. This was a real, the real, a righteous, pious Jew used to do. Because the robe, the, the dress, the overcoat, what he wears, meaning of that. The strings are not for the beauty, for the music. It represents the word of God. It represents the, the, the scripture. It represents the healing. It represents the redemption. We also have, you know, God directs us, wishes us to be, have a separated people. You cannot dress like others are dressing. You cannot walk like others are walking. Because you are a Jew. You are a Hebrew. You are a new in the Testament Israel. So the cloth, the, the dress you wear has a representation of who you are. Anything you wear, 
Anything you do and go, oh no, my heart is good. Because I am from New Jersey. I bring, I brought up two, 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 two daughters. I was coupling and struggling with them always. They got married, they're doing good. They are people of God right now. Because I, I know what happened. I confront with many young, young women in my, my church. They say, uncle, my heart is good. That's with the God. But with the people, you have representation that you are a Jew, you are a Hebrew, you are a man of God, you are a woman of God. You are a representation of Christ. Praise God. So she held the tongue of Jesus. Immediately, you know that, Bible says that. Her bleeding, her issues stopped. And she was healed. Praise the Lord. Jesus stood, Jesus stared, and asked, Who touched me? And either Peter, ja James, and Jacob was along with him, you know, just face to face going. Yeah, they will always with Jesus. Then only they, it will come on the Facebook, you know. Then only it will come on the newspaper. Then only it will come on the TV. Very close to Jesus. And they start you know, pushing Jesus. So Jesus said, no, you are pushing Peter. You are pushing for a chair. You are pushing me for a president's position. You ask me, I left everything. I leave everything. We left everything, what you will get? That is the intention of your heart. Many people are pushing Jesus for positions, for promotions, for provisions, for providence. Praise the Lord. But Jesus said, this touch was not that. This is not Peter touch. This is not James touch. This is not Jacob touch. This is not Judah touch. This is a special touch. From me, the power has gone out. Praise the Lord. Power has gone out. Somebody get healed. Let me tell you one thing. In this spiritual world, there are many things happening. You know? Maybe you are very close to the church. Maybe you are a pastor. Maybe you are associating with very spiritual you know, aspects and to the closeness of the church. But there are something goes on the spiritual realm which you don't know. Something happened there. Only two people knew. One that woman plus Jesus. In between there is a society. Peter's society. Jacob's society. James' society. They didn't know about it. It's so always in this spiritual world something is going over which you don't know. Does it mean that committee of the church should know? Or the council should know? But still, there are something going over your spiritual, the world, over you, which you don't know. Something happened there. Only two people knew about it. Even now it happens. Special things taking, taking places. Special things happening. She came to fell on Jesus' feet. And she cried and said the story. That was a tale of torment of 12 years. A story of untouchability and reproaches. A tale of touch with the faith. Stern faith. Praise God. Let me tell you that which law forbid her to be in the society or getting healed or out of the society, the same law brought her in. Right. And she was healed. Jesus called her daughter. You know, in Greek it is Tugatera. There are two words for daughter in Greek. One is Corin, other one is Tugatera. Corin 
you call daughter for servant maid, this, that. But Tugatara is you loving your own daughter, whom you love mom. She never heard that for last 12 years. She was standard address as a breeding woman, unclean lady. Even her parents never called her daughter. If the parents call her daughter, she will go and cling to hug her. If I call my daughter, daughter, she come and hug me. They never call. She was isolated, separated, sheltered her away. Jesus called her daughter. Your faith has healed you. So for our problems, answer is Jesus. Even he is in the street. Even he is in the street today, roaming around, walking around, healing the people, looking for who touches Rob, who calls upon his name, who pleads for help. Don't think that Jesus is away. He's always there. When you see about uh, the the lamb which was lost, the shepherd, what did you do? He left 99 and went for the lost one. Many times you think that Jesus is in your presence in this congregation. That is right. Spiritually, uh, the Lord is now in our presence, in our midst, getting our worship and sitting in the throne of grace of our praise. But physically, he is not with you and me. He is in the street of California, Los Angeles, among the drunkards, the street of New York, street of you know, Dallas, searching for the people who dies, who needs help, who needs touch. Praise the Lord. Who solves our problem, who heals our sickness. Praise the Lord. Many times you think that Jesus is busy because he was traveling one place to another according to the request of the Jairus, a main official, a main mayor of the city. People were going after him. Rushing. Our Lord is not busy, you know. Don't think that he is a busy person. He will stay, he will stand still on your touch, on your prayer, on your hold, on your plea, on your cry. Doesn't you have to cry loudly? You can cry silently with the faith. She said, if I touch him, I will be healed. That faith saved me. Praise God. Let me cut short my mistake. Let us meditate on what we had today. Our Lord is a Lord who is in the street, no? Not always in the temple on the mount. He is looking for our problems, searching for us. Waiting for us, looking for a crack. Though he is busy. I was really wondering, you know, people are rushing him, going away, going to Jairus' home because somebody died there to, to raise them up. If this is one of the one of the manifestos which he had to do. Lord has to himself to reveal the Son of God because. Three resurrections he has done, three raising. One is Jairo's daughter. Second one is Vidor's son, who died for eight, no, more than eight hours. Then the Lazarus is more than four, four days. This is three, no, the, 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 the miracles which he has performed, who raised three people from the dead. So this is one of the manifestos. This is one of the 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 the, the, 
what do you call the scripture thrilling scenario which he had to perform or commit. Even in between, he did not forget that young girl who was suffering, who was upset, who was isolated, who was desperate, who was you know, uh, afflicted for 12 years. She got her life back. She got her faith back. She got her society back. She got her justice back. May God bless you. Thank you.